good day everyone welcome to this lecture in this lecture i will show you how to model adiabatic and isothermal processes in aspen isis now before we go into the simulation environment i would like to refresh your memory on the difference between the adiabatic and isothermal processes so for isothermal processes what you have is that the temperature across the system is constant throughout so there is no temperature change while for the adiabatic process you have um, you have that the there is no heat exchange or there is no heat flow in and out of the system right so there is no heat interaction between the system and the environment right so that's basically the difference between the isothermal and then the ad adiabatic process right then also for the isothermal process uh, temperature change in temperature which is dt is equal to zero while um, the q is not equal to zero which is the change in heat flow is not equal to zero while for the adiabatic process the change in heat flow is um, zero yes the q is equal to zero while the change in temperature which is the t is not equal to zero right then for isothermal processes they majorly occur um slowly while the adiabatic processes may occur faster right so these are the basic differences between the adiabatic and the isothermal processes now for the illustration in this particular tutorial we'll be making use of the model we did uh, in a previous tutorial right in a previous tutorial which um, involved the kinetic um, modeling so we'll be using that for this illustration so on the left on the left we have um, adiabatic uh, models and on the right we have isothermal models now I'll I'll be illustrating I'll be illustrating the difference right yes so um, for the adiabatic you have that um, change in Q is equal to zero right so now if you want to model an adiabatic reactor all you have to do is to model the reactor without a an energy stream right all you need to do is model the reactor without an energy stream right so here um, this first um, reactor was modeled without an energy stream so in this particular model this first model that the um, CSTR is highlighted we can assume that Q is equal to zero right this is one way to actually model an adiabatic process right modeling the equipment without energy right another method will be to model it with an energy stream but specifying the heat flow as zero right so for example in this second reactor I modeled with an energy stream and i specified the q right the heat flow as zero right so if you model it and specify as zero you have also modeled an adiabatic system right so basically that's it and you will notice that um you will notice that the temperature is not um constant right so you see that the inlet temperature is about 22.58 and then the outlet temperature is about 26.18 right and you know that um the temperature was changing across right the system right so and you can even confirm it from the second reactor as well right so this is for the first reactor and this is for the second you see that both of them have the same temperature values right so the inlet is 22.58 and then the outlet is 26.18 right so you can see that both reactors have the same temperature values irrespective of the fact that this guy does not have a an energy stream and this other one has an energy stream right so you can see that both of them are modeled as adiabatic processes because the q is equal to zero right and there is a change in temperature across the system right so basically this um, obeys the adiabatic rules right then for the isothermal you can also see that on the right hand side 
so for the isothermal you have temperature to be constant right so what that means is that the inlet and the outlet temperature will be constant right inlet and outlet will be constant right and you can now see that the q value is not equal to zero right so in this case the software calculates the q value and you see that it's not equal to zero right so you see that the temperature is constant throughout and you can also confirm that from your parameters um okay i wanted to look for delta t but delta t is not here i think delta t can be found in can be found in heaters right heaters and coolers okay so but you can see that the inlet and outlet temperatures are the same right for this particular um reactor what it means is that this is an isothermal reactor right and you can also see that in this other one too so you see that the um the inlet and outlet temperatures are the same as well right and you also see that the heat flow is not equal to zero right so when you specify temperature isis calculates heat flow and when you spe specify heat flow isis calculates temperature right so if you want to model an isothermal process all you need to do is you need to add your energy stream right attach an energy stream to the equipment whether it's a reactor or a separator or any other thing you are trying to model just add your energy stream and then specify the temperature of the outlet right you specify the temperature of the outlet to be the same as the temperature of the inlet and with that you specify your um, equipment as an isothermal um, equipment right yeah so then also if you want to specify for an adiabatic process you can either model the process without an energy stream or you add an energy stream and you specify the heat flow as zero right so when you specify it as zero you have modeled an adiabatic system or when you model it without when you model without your um energy stream you have also modeled an adiabatic system so basically that is what we have for this particular lecture and with this we have come to the end of this tutorial if you have questions on isothermal and adiabatic processes kindly let me know via the comment section then like this video and share with your friends also subscribe to this channel if you have not done so yet thank you for joining me in this particular tutorial do have a good day